And but, yeah. Mm-hmm. You go. Uh-huh. No, you go, baby. Please go. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today, we'll be making sense of life through 500 Days of Summer. Which I've seen a million times. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I, I'm always <laughs> tired. 500 Days of Summer, maybe I should let you, because you, uh, you've seen it more. So okay, we... so it's two people. It is not a love story. No, that's right. <laughs> as they point out, but it's two people. One is in love with the... They, they get into a relationship. But one person is hoping for a for the, the, a romantic relationship. Mm-hmm. The other person feels a draw towards mm-hmm. this other person, the guy. Mm-hmm. So Summer doesn't want to doesn't believe in romantic relationships. Neither nor is she interested in a, a, a pursuing one with Tom. In, with Tom, yeah. And she makes that clear to Tom. But Tom hopes that with time, as their relationship progresses, she's going to settle into it being romantic. Mm-hmm. Because she, because he has these deep feelings for her, and they have a really strong connection. They like a lot of things, and they're both very fun, quirky, goofy people. Mm-hmm. Same taste, and they're very jovial. Very jovial. I would say. There we go. I'll say, <laughs> that, that's better. It's a powerful feeling when it just seems like everything you are and do and feel and think about clicks with the other person. Mm-hmm. You know? It's yeah. very easy for that to just feel like, this is it. Yeah. That's what I've been waiting for. Yeah, this so is kismet. Th- the whole time Tom is trying to get Summer to see um, that this relationship is truly magnificent and is worthy of getting a official uh, officialized status. yeah it, yeah into yeah. A, a relationship a romantic relationship and Summer persists you know mm-hmm. I don't that's not what I want mm-hmm. and she says this throughout the relationship and he continues to be hurt by it mm-hmm. and is trying very hard to just look at it platonic it platonically oh you know this is just casual Mm -hmm. but then he's like yeah but she's in my bed how is that casual you know Mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's basically the relationship um and yeah mm -hmm, you go Uh no you go baby please go well yeah i guess a lot of the movie for me is miscommunication or not communicating you know you can kind of see it from both sides but that's because they're not a lot of it, they're just like, no, I'm good. I'm fine. Or what's on your mind? Are you sure? It's a lot of that movie is, is neither of them really knowing what to say or how to properly say it to the other person, what they're going through, what they, again, what their intentions were. Because, yeah, Tom brings up a good point. He's like, is this casual? But in her mind, casual is, well, yeah, it's casual sex or casual hooking up and we could be kind of friends with benefits or it's kind of depending on, you know, just spur of the moment. Yeah, okay, I guess we're, I'm back at your place, you know? And he's thinking, that's not... You know, this is a relationship thing. This is what you do, but it's perspective. Summer doesn't, as much as she says it a couple of times to Tom, that I just want, we're friends Mm -hmm. and that's it. And that's all I can ever give you. I cannot give you anymore. I guess the reason I'm, I'm thinking this is because I know the kind of person I am is I do tend to think uh, for other people Mm -hmm. and what it is that they're going to be experiencing based on my actions. And so if I were in Summer's shoes, I I would have said, I would have said to Tom, look, this is, I've been, I've, I keep saying that I just yeah. want to be friends with you. Yeah. I see that you are, you have feelings, romantic feelings for me. I know for me that that's never going to change, but at the same time, and I, and I would like for us to continue as we are, this friends with benefits situation that we have. But at the same time, I'm concerned about whether or not it would be good for you. It mm. would be good for me because it serves yeah. what I, my yeah. needs. But I can see that it's not serving your needs. Yeah. And so I want to know. I want to hear it from you mm. that you are okay with the possibility. Because here you are seeming mm. like you want this to progress into a romantic relationship. I want to know for sure. Yeah. Um, to Just to clear my own conscience that you are okay with what I want. Mm-hmm. Even if... Even though you know that you would prefer for us to have a romantic relationship. Are you okay with us? With the possibility... That it's never going to happen. And then if he wasn't okay, then I would leave. Because yeah. I don't want to be engaging with someone in a way that I know that would ultimately yeah. hurt them. So that's yeah. me. Yeah. Each time I watch the movie, I find myself oscillating between whether or not she was in the wrong. Or if she was in the right. Like she had... Yeah. Because she was honest throughout. Yeah. I think, again, if I were her, I would have done things differently. But at the yeah. same time... Because both of them don't... Are, I feel like both of them were wrong in the sense of the walking on eggshells egg around mm-hmm. each other. She says that I don't want to be friends, but then she never really qualifies that. I mean, mm-hmm. she, sa- she, she says that I just we're just friends, mm-hmm. but she never really qualifies that. And I say that because at the end of the day, friendship is, 
is platonic. Mm -hmm. She doesn't even say we're friends with benefits. Yeah. You know, so yeah. she doesn't qualify this um, unique kind of friend friendship that is had that is out outside the realm of what we yeah. know to be friendship as it is defined. Yeah. So in that way, she isn't clear. It's true. And it's, that's that's not fair, I think. It's, it's murky, and she doesn't seem to realize that, because he spends the whole time agonizing over with his friends, and they can't really make sense of it, because it is a bit confusing, where she'll kind of come up to him sometimes out of nowhere, give him a kiss, or then kind of seem like, are we hooking up, or, you know, what's going on? Um, which is stuff that, that feels more relationshipy, and the other time she'll do things that are very much just a friend's thing. So she she was making it murky. Yeah. And, and because it's from his perspective mainly, you're also not only ro you're rooting for him, so I think it they kind of put that misplaced hope in you as well, as the same as, as he's going through, the same misplaced hope that he's going through. So that's, I, I think, also why it seems like she's being unfair or at times not cool. Yeah. Or uh, murky, and then you have to remember, oh no, it's more we're kind of getting it from his perspective where you want them to work out, you know? On his end, he's also not making himself clear about what he wants. Um, and I think the reason is because of what the sister says. He's worried that if he does tell her what he wants, what she, what he wants from the relationship, then she may decide, okay, I'm going to end this. So it's, so she's afraid. I think he is afraid of the consequences of him, of being honest because you know, at the end of the day, given that she doesn't want a romantic relationship, if she if he comes in and says, I want this, I want us to be um, girlfriend and boyfriend, I want us to go, yeah. you know, heavy. Mm -hmm. He's, I think, is worried that then it's going to stop. He must, she might put a mm -hmm. stop to it when she realizes, okay, there's a lot of st at stake here. Yeah. This person is hoping for this. I don't want to give him that. And so I'm going to stop. And so he obviously is enjoying this relationship that mm -hmm. they have, whatever it is. Yeah. Both of them are enjoying this relationship, yeah. whatever it is that they have. Mm -hmm. So I think in that way, they kind of, who, who whether she's wrong or um, he's wrong, I think yeah. it kind of balances itself out yeah. where in the end, because they're not doing these yeah, important that's things. That's why it didn't work. Then they're both at fault for yeah, the relationship. Yeah. There's no one, there's no villain, basically. No. Again, you assume people's thought process is like yours. Because yeah. you want to believe that you can also understand people that you end up spending a lot of time with and you want to be able to do that without communicating certain things you feel like you just shouldn't have to get clarification on that you should just be able to know so when he when he says near the end uh, after she's gotten married and he's like, i'll never understand someone who says don't believe in love don't believe in fate or relationships then you get married but he was saying well, why did you dance with me at our friend's wedding when this guy was already in your life this guy she ended up marrying at the end and she's like i wanted to I just wanted to yeah, and he's, you know, because in his mind, that's just not something that would ever make sense to him. If but you weren't romantically yeah. involved or... Which, and he's like, you just do stuff, don't you? Just do what you want. Yeah. So he's still not really understanding her thought process, which is just different from his. That's all it is. I understood his frustration because obviously he's on the receiving end of this. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, well, both of you are doing what you want, yep. you know, True. at the end of the day. True. And that's what people do, isn't it? I do believe that Tom was in love with her. And I believe that Summer truly cared for Tom. Mm -hmm. And I think Tom made her happy, mm -hmm. you know, and she would say, I like you. And mm -hmm. I like that she did that, yeah. right? Because she was making sure not to to say things like, I love you. Yeah, you know? she never did. She never did. And I, I, and I think with Summer... She is very honest with herself. Mm -hmm. I definitely believe that you can have an affinity for someone, a very, mm -hmm. very deep one, and you could enjoy this person's company so much and love them platonically, mm -hmm. truly. And I think some, that was the case with Summer. And you see that after the breakup, how much she longs for them to to reconnect yeah. as friends. She says things like, I hope this means we can still be friends. Yeah. People look at that and like, oh no, you're put she's putting you in the friend zone, mm -hmm. you know? And people look at those kinds of things negatively. But it doesn't necessarily mean like I don't know. The, obviously, the conception of a friend zone is is negative. Is negative, but it's not really a negative thing it's for negative someone that who, someone who wants to the other person to be in love with them. Yeah, and yeah. and and even then, I think we really kind of need to reconfigure our way of internalizing when mm -hmm. someone says, "Can we just be friends?" Because yeah. friendship is also very very important, mm -hmm. and those two people. I think they did have a very good friendship. Outside of the romantic relationship, they had a very good friendship. Mm -hmm. And Summer enjoyed that very much. Summer knows what she wants, mm -hmm. right? And she knows that there's something missing that doesn't allow her to get to the point of feeling romantically towards Tom. Mm -hmm. She can't n know 
what it she doesn't know necessarily know what it is she can't actually name it but that's just the reality she just knows innately that this person does not complete mm-hmm. me yeah. in the way that i need to mm-hmm. as much as she, as the person fulfills me and that's very possible mm-hmm. as much as i enjoy his company i enjoy the intimacy the physical intimacy mm-hmm. but i know that long term this is not someone that i could completely yeah. i could say that i'm going to settle with mm-hmm. as as a romantic partner yeah you know yeah. and i think that that's okay i think that that was going what was going on with summer yeah. and i don't think that she's a bad person for that no. No. yeah and you know i think uh, why the, the friend zone is, is seen as such a shameful need to avoid kind of situation i think is because what is the friend zone rejection for the one person mm-hmm. and rejection is one of the hardest things for people to, to deal take, with rejection yeah. abandonment the the, the the sense of fear of loneliness i suppose so that's, yeah. And, and also just the selfish aspect of wanting something and the other person being like, no, nope, I'm not yeah. going to give it to you. Not yeah. getting the thing that you want. So that's that's why people just find it. But you're right. It also shouldn't be. It's, it's I think, a bit immature that people kind of have this. They want to put the shame on people like, oh, you got friend zoned. You know, yeah. you should feel bad. That's that. Then you, you make people want to do anything possible to avoid that, which is Exactly. Healthy. Yeah. It's interesting because, yeah, like Summer... Oh my, my gosh, this whole movie, right? I'm like up and down, up and down with her. But in the end, I remember they meet at the park and she's like, I was hoping to see you here. Yeah. And um, she's like, it's one of my favorite places since, mm. since you introduced me to it. And yeah. you can really tell that she misses him yeah. and cares about him. And I felt so bad because she was even afraid to approach him because she knows that this person is so angry with mm-hmm. with her. and But she just wants his friendship. Yeah. That's that's a good point. I think the first time I did feel like she was more in the wrong, but if she was someone who was a, I feel like I want to say fly by night. I'm not sure if that's the, but someone who's very whimsical will drop someone when it's not serving them anymore. You know, that kind of thing that yeah. will just kind of use people in that way. But if she was like that, actually, she wouldn't then try, every time they bumped into each other on the train, she wanted to get coffee with them. And then at the end scene, which is great, where they're at the park, she also wouldn't be trying to reconnect with them and be like, are we cool? Because like, you know, I still you're a good person and, yeah. and you know she wouldn't do that if she was just using him or whatever right yeah so and sometimes it's hard to explain yourself to people mm-hmm. you know like even if with friendships let's never mind mm-hmm. uh, romantic mm-hmm. relationships yeah. sometimes you meet people and they are so drawn to you and you are maybe someone who's really good at interacting with different people from walk different walks of life mm-hmm. maybe you're someone who's so good at um tapping into people's emotions and people opening up to you and they just, you just have this thing about you that's mm-hmm. absolutely magnetizing. And that person that you're meeting and interacting with, they are so drawn to you and they feel that like this communication was mm-hmm. absolutely fantastic. They want to hang out with you forever. They want mm-hmm. you guys to be friends, mm-hmm. but you don't want to be because they weren't recipro- re- reciprocating. Yeah. They weren't reciprocating because they aren't like you. Mm-hmm. So this person in their mind, you had this fantastic, incredible yeah. interaction. Yeah. But for you, you were just really working. You weren't really mm-hmm. getting anything in, in return. But mm-hmm. if you met someone who was exactly like you, mm-hmm. then that that meeting, that moment that you met, you'd feel like, oh my God, mm-hmm. I want to interact with this person. Yeah. And that happens a lot. Yeah. Or like, you know, you have friends, you socialize with friends. It's just, but then realistically you sit down and you realize, okay, at the end of the day, I think this, these are just my drinking buddies my Friday night buddies, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Because there's so many things about you that they don't know, that mm-hmm. you don't share, that you don't feel yeah. comfortable to share with them. Yeah. And so I think that's where, that's how we should look at it when mm-hmm. we're watching this movie. Because yeah, you can you can be in a relationship with someone and, and maybe even love them, but not feel completely fulfilled by them mm-hmm. enough to say, I want to settle down with this, with you. Yeah. And I think with Summer, she knew that for herself. She knew that, yes, she probably loved Tom and didn't want to say love because then it would play mm-hmm. into what his his fantasy of yeah. what they could be. But And so that's why she was so hard fast on l- like, I yeah. like, to yeah. make sure that he knows like this is not going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. But I think that she loved him, but knew mm-hmm. that it wasn't going to go anywhere. Yeah. She couldn't settle around him in the way that she wants. Yeah. For herself yeah like well she ultimately learns that right mm-hmm. because in the before she meets the yeah. husband she truly thought that no way love mm-hmm. does not exist yeah. you know and i think that most likely people have experienced that too yeah. and uh it's it's well done in that uh i think i know for me probably a lot of people have been in both positions yeah i've been in tom's position a couple times where i thought oh man like it just seems like 
you know, we're the exact same person. And then you get these ideas of maybe this could be really great. It could be really, and they just totally think, oh yeah, that's cool that, you know, we, we both happen to know the same whatever. And it's just, it's nothing more than that. And you think, oh, this is worth pursuing. This could be something really magical, you know, or this is one in a lifetime thing or whatever. Yeah. And then I've been on Summer's End too, where you were surprised when someone, you're like, oh, re oh, really? Because I was, I was, pff, sorry, I, I do not think. You, you really? spend a lot of time thinking about that, that memory or that, that time we did the thing because I haven't thought about it since. Yeah. So I've yeah. Been, on, been on both sides. Yeah, That's me how too. the human brain is. Yeah. yeah. I've also been on the side where I had a friend and she introduced me as her best friend. Mm. And I was taken aback when she said that. Honestly, I was like, I'm her best friend. This is how I gauge whether or not um, a relationship platonic or otherwise for yeah. me can ever become a solid relationship that I want to last forever mm -hmm. to be honest yeah. is that I whether or not I'm, I'm able to be myself yeah. with the person completely yeah. if I find that I'm kind of restricting myself as I interact or holding back the kind of information that I'm sharing censoring myself in a lot of things that I do if I find that I'm doing that then I'm not going to that I know that this is not the right thing the, the right relationship for me yeah it's it's a, it's a hard people's emo people's feelings of saying I don't think we're as close as you think we are yeah that's always gonna you know that's hard to say to someone or to really you know without being able to be totally honest about it taking emotions out of it you can't really yeah to be like it seems like you need me more than it, or vice versa, or like, you know, you, how do you see that? Because I see it this way. That's, yeah. that's, that's tough for anybody to do. Yeah. Everybody deserves to service their own personal needs. Mm -hmm. Summer does. Yep. And sometimes it hurts people when you do do that. Um, but at the same time, long term, I think it would hurt both of them. Yeah. Tom has agency. It's on him to realize that, again, his expectations were different. So it's not really on her. He can... He can get upset with her. He can, you know, feel like she's she's in the wrong. She's a bad person. Look what she's doing to me. But yeah. that's not taking ownership of what he's doing to cause his pain. Exactly. Yeah. So no villains here. No villains. Just two people. A lot of times there aren't <laughs> any villains. Yeah, there are no villains, just lessons. Just lessons. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, but in life. There are only villains if there are lessons left unlearned. <laughs> Great movie. And yeah. a lot to chew on. And, yeah, uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, what do you uh, think? I think moral of the story for your yourself. You know, if someone that you loved and you wanted them to love you in the same way that you love that you love them doesn't give you the same back, don't be upset with the person. Don't don't, don't villainize the person. Don't villainize, don't Especially it. when they're honest with you. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. You can yeah. love and not you, be loved. Yeah. It happens. You think you found the one and then you don't want to have to go back into the searching. That's what you gotta do sometimes, yeah. and then you'll find someone that wants to be with you in the exact same way. Yeah, and that's that'll be that's that's worth it. So that's about it. That's about it. Till next Bye. time. That's a wrap. <laughs>